Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I am Andy Signor, and I'm very excited to have an expert here to answer some questions about this case. Now, I have to be very clear here. John Hubbard, thank you for being here. John Hubbard is a, uh, has so much expertise. He has 25 years in the service, 10 years as a detective, eight years as a sergeant. You were deputy of the year five times in Tampa Bay. However, he was not involved in this case. He's retired uh, uh, private investigator now uh, with all your years of service. I'm so excited to get your insight on this case. So thank you for being here, John. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So, John, also just to make sure we're clear, uh, you're, you're not involved in the case, but you also have been following it uh, to the minutia, but you have been following sort of the main uh, main events here. And I, and I was hoping we could break this down into a few segments to answer some questions that I know me and my audience have to get more of a detective reaction to things. Uh, and the first topic I wanted to get right into, which as we were talking previously on the phone, I, I found very interesting. I think is important for our audience to hear. There's a lot of people who are frustrated that we don't have the autopsy report in this case. Uh, but you had some strong feelings as to why that is, and I wanted to get your feelings. So I guess let's go right there. Why don't we have an autopsy report, John? Well, I don't think law enforcement should give it out to the media because the autopsy is going to give you the cause and manner of death, which right now only law enforcement and the perpetrator knows how that happened. And so giving that out uh, gives an advantage to, in this case, probably Mr. Landry, you know, to know what we have and what what they actually know. And so I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest that they give that out to the public, uh, you know, the the cause of death, because when if and when an interview ever takes place with this this man, uh, you know, the way he answers, whether he's truthful or not, the way he answers a lot of the questions will let the investigators know whether or not he in fact knows how she died. And if we give that out at the autopsy, if they go ahead and give that out to the public, everybody will know whether it was strangulation, whether it was a blunt trauma, a gunshot wound or whatever. You know, I would leave that as a mystery until this man has been apprehended and given a chance to give an interview. Right. I, mean, I imagine it's also a little bit of the parents, too. I, that's why I've, I, I've avoided this topic, and I don't really want to talk about the depth, the details or speculate on how she died. I just think it's out of place until we know for sure and are told, and it's out there as sort of a, as a fact in this case. Uh, but I imagine the, the family, respecting the family is another reason this happens. But I, I, my, my question is more, is it common? Is it common for detectives and, and agencies to keep that as, as long as possible? Does that sometimes get leaked out? How common is it for it to not, and especially in a case this big, for them to have hold on, held on to it for so long. Yeah, unfortunately, the bigger these cases, the more notoriety and publicity they get, the more likely somebody is going to give the information up. Uh, personally, I would never want, I would never want it to be released if I was on the law enforcement side of things. I wouldn't want it out at all until until he's apprehended. Like I said, and you know, he has his interview. There was questions as to whether there's a speculation and theories like John Walsh accidentally gave a cause of death. Would, would someone like that even know? Like, who knows this information, I guess, is the other thing I want to no. really figure out. Like, could I mean, so, was, could the, the parents, would they even know? No. Well, only if uh, Mr. Landry confessed to them that he did it and how he did it. But as far as the, getting the autopsy results, no, they're not going to they're not going to release that. They're not even going to release that to the Petito family. No one's getting that. That, well, that's interesting because that's why I'm asking. So the Petito family, the, no. what they're dealing with the FBI, the FBI would still not no. say, look, we're not going to tell No, it's we an open investigation. They do not, they are not privy to that information. So people like and John Mr. Walsh, would they, would they, none of these people would have information is the reality. No, not, 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 not in an open source. No. So if they're getting it, unfortunately, we live in a political society and some people for one reason or another leak information that they are not, they should never do. You know, there could be somebody from the medical examiner's office that maybe has some kind of a relationship with Mr. Walsh or somebody else that would leak it, but that would be improper. So speculating on that and figuring that out, that this is all hearsay. The fact that we don't have this information, while it's frustrating a lot of people, we should be glad we don't have this information because as soon as this information comes out, it gives Brian a chance, if he is the killer, to get away with it is what you're saying. Absolutely. It, 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 only, it can only benefit the perpetrator. 
And so, uh, and I'm curious there with the, with, for, for Brian's lawyer and everything, do, is that like for Brian's defensive side, is it, is it, do they almost wish it, they, I'm sure they want it out, right? They want as much information as possible so that he could defend the client because there's also talk of other murderers now in the area. There's the two girls in the Mohawk City who got, and there's a hiker who was missing. Uh, these are all another things that can sort of be used to protect Brian if he is trying to hide this murder uh, to do that, correct? Correct. The defense attorney's job really isn't to prove Brian's innocent so much as it is to to bring um, other possibilities of who else may have done it so that they that, you know, Mr. Landry, Brian himself doesn't look like the only one that could have done it. But, you know, you got to have motive and opportunity and all that and everything. The, all the light looks at, at Brian Landry. There's, you know, we, we're going to get into that a little bit deeper. But, uh, you know, to me at this point, there is no other viable suspect other than, than Mr. Brian Landry himself. Are there any other informations that they haven't been, re like, you know, releasing? Like, is there, is there, are you surprised that the sort of how, how little they are giving is that, but again, I guess this is all the same answer. The less the FBI again, tells if I was us. So, I've had my, I've been a PI now for nine years, but when I was on the law enforcement side, I, I didn't want the media and the public to have anything, any information whatsoever. So like everything that they've gotten out of the search warrant. Now, typically, you know, when the cops are do, even doing homicide cases, there's not, you know, CNN and Fox News sitting outside with video cameras watching how long and how many people are inside. No one even knows when the search warrant has even taken place. But so I am certain that the FBI and company have gotten plenty of evidence out of that search warrant out of the Landry's home. Right. And they're not sharing that, nor should they. Right, because they at this point it's safe to assume they have the cause of death. Correct. I mean, they obviously do. There's no doubt they ha they absolutely have the cause of death. They 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 absolutely have that. I mean, and so and then because there was talk of another aut the mess of them bumbling this autopsy and they brought in another expert, but that also may be hearsay. They may have brought in additional experts just to give them more evidence. Do you have experience with sort of autopsy reporting? Like, do, how, is it usually pretty simple to get that report? Is it is it pretty conclusive when you get that type of type of report? It, it is, but in, like I say, in a big case like this, Mr. Landry's uh, defense team is trying to muddy the waters. So they're going to bring in their so-called expert. And unfortunately, with a lot of experts, they're going to say whatever they're paid to say, you know. So that's the unfortunate side of you know, of these cases is you're going to, they're going to bring somebody in that they can pay to say X, Y, and Z, and could this have happened, and could that, and play the what if game. But no, they're pretty cut and dry. It, you know, I hate to even use the word science anymore, you know, of what's taken place in the last few years in this country. But truthfully, I mean, it's it is a science, you know. You know, unfortunately, she died and there's a, a manner in which she died and how she died. And it's it's going to be spelled out very clearly in that autopsy report. And it, it, the, would that come out after they get Brian and they've questioned him? Uh, what, 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 and again, I would say so. I mean, obviously, once the trial has taken place, but uh, because they don't want to uh, to taint any uh, prospective jurors, it's going to be hard to see the jury in this case. The more information that the public has that's where your jury pool is also coming from. Right. So you're going to take, you know, a thousand people in a room and try to, you know, get 12 good people out of there. And if every one of them have have all these details, you know, you're making it tougher and tougher for them to be objective, regardless of how they feel about the case. Well, we have lots more to talk about uh, with uh, John. I'm so grateful to have you here, John. I just want to give you a plug as well. You can go to Hubbard Investigations to learn more about him. He's a private investigator now, a very busy man, and I'm grateful for you taking the time. We have some more questions. We're going to be going through him. I want to split these out into little videos. Uh, I'm so grateful to be here, John. Uh, stay tuned. If you want more information uh, like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell for all alerts, uh, smash that like button, and leave your comments. We're going to have John join us on a live stream next week as well, so I uh, hope to have him here live, answer your questions there, and I'm so grateful for him being here. Stay tuned for more with John Hubbard. <laughs>